Hi Life Sciences students, my name is Melissa and I'm going to be going through how to write biological essays in this lesson. Um, just a bit of background, I've been teaching IV for a long time, marking essays also for quite a while now and I've noticed that there are certain major problems with writing scientific essays or biological essays. So I thought it was really important in order for everyone in the IEB to be able to do really well in essays is to do a lesson on it. So I hope that you gain lots from it and I'm quite excited to actually be doing this for all of you. Okay, so the first thing about essays is that it's a scientific or a biological essay. It is not an English essay, it's not a history essay. And I find a lot of you get confused with how to write the different types of essays. So with a biological essay, it needs to be fact intensive. Every single sentence needs to have a fact, either from the sources or from your own knowledge. You can't write around the topic. You can't use flowery language. You need to use scientific language. It needs to be scientifically correct and scientifically valid at all times. Okay, you don't repeat yourself. You don't go on and on about a concept. You explain the concept and then you let it go and you move on to the next. So with all essays, obviously, you need to have an introduction, a body and a conclusion. Okay, but um, before you even do that, you need to plan your essay. So we are going to do um, a pretend or a practice essay on genetically modified organisms. And let's just say that the essay topic is, should genetically modified organisms be allowed? Or should you be able to eat genetically modified organisms? Is it okay? Is it not okay? Is it dangerous? Is it not? Okay, so these are things that you will think about when you read the essay topic. Now, obviously you are given lots and lots of sources and you need to read those sources properly. My suggestion to you is you read them properly the first time. Another suggestion that I have is because it's an argumentative essay or because you need to make a decision and argue your decision, I suggest you take two different color highlighters when you're reading. And the one color will be for the argument and the other color will be against the argument. So that at least when you are looking through your sources, you will have some idea of, what, of where the information is. Is it your argument or is it going to be your counter argument? Okay, so the planning is really, really important. And I always say this to my students, if you plan correctly, the rest follows really, really easily. So there are different types of plans that you can use for a biological essay. My suggestion to you is you use a mind map. Now I know you're all rolling your eyes because I also roll my eyes when I think of the term mind map. It's like grade three, I'm not doing it, okay. I hate mind maps. However, when it's a biological essay, it works because you need to look at the information and you need to separate it into themes. And if each bubble is a theme, then you write a much better essay. Okay, so a few things when you write in the mind map that you all, as I said, you don't have to use the, use the mind map. You can use a table or something else that suits you better. But I have seen from the essays that I've marked and the students that I've taught that mind maps do work better. When you're doing the mind map, or when you're, first before you do the mind map and you're reading your information, you're reading the sources, you need to look for themes. You need to look for big topics that have certain things underneath it. And that is the best way to plan it. Because if you can plan according to themes or major topics, then you write a much clearer essay. You don't repeat yourself, you don't go off on tangents, you just get to the point straight away. Okay. So let's go through how to do this. So the first thing you will do when you are reading your sources, you've got your two colors and you're reading and you're highlighting the for the argument, against the argument, you need to make a decision. Now that decision is very important. It's based on the sources, but it is also based on your own knowledge because you have certain amount of knowledge from what you've studied or from what you just generally know. And that knowledge will help you argue, uh, argue that essay point. Okay. So I'm going to use, from my own knowledge and from what I've taught, I'm going to take the stance, or I'm going to make the decision that genetically modified organisms are not bad to consume, okay? So let's put that as the central bubble in the mind map. The, um, it's going to, you have to actually put your decision in the mind map. So over here, I will say,
okay, genetically modified organisms are good. I don't particularly like for you. Let's just say they are good in general. That is the stance that you are taking. Two reasons why you do this, to keep reminding yourself that that is your stance, and also to alert the examiner to say, this is my stance. So as long as due is throughout the essay, you don't change your stance, it's quite clear what decision you have made. Okay, so then you're going to be reading all the information, and you're going to see, okay, the first theme is crops. Okay, you can read a lot of in source A and source D and with all the different sources, there's lots and lots of information about crops, genetically modified crops. Okay, and now you've got that as a theme in, in, your, in your mind. The next, okay, you can do um, cattle. Okay, you see a whole lot of things about, a whole lot of information about livestock, about livestock. And that can be another theme. And then you carry on reading and you notice a third theme. And that is financial implications. Okay, so excuse my handwriting. It's terrible and hopefully you'll get used to it. Okay, otherwise you'll just listen to what I'm saying. Right, so let's say there's financial implications. There might be more themes. I'm just giving you three good themes and that is what you need at least, minimum three good themes. Okay, so yeah, you've got the themes. Now let's discuss what you'll put under the theme. So the first point you notice, okay, is an increased yield. Okay, that increased yield with all that information comes from source A. Okay, there's obviously more information in the text. You don't need to write out the whole text because it's a plan for your essay. It's not the actual essay and you can't run out of time. But this will give you an indication of what to write from the text so that you're not using the text word for word and you are putting your own voice to it. And that's the concept. So that's the clause that will help you write about that. Okay, then you notice another thing in source, let's say source C about less disease. Okay, I'm not going to do all of them, it's just examples. And then you can carry on, maybe there are five or six different points from the different sources. What I want you to notice is that I'm not planning according to the sources, I'm planning according to the themes. So the theme is crops. Wherever I find information about crops in any source, I put it over here. Okay, there's one other very, very important point that you have to do here, okay? You have to include your own knowledge. At least one own knowledge in every single theme. If you have more than one, great. The other problem I've noticed is that some students end up putting in, making an entire essay just on own knowledge. That is also incorrect. You just need to include or integrate your own knowledge into the essay. So by putting it over here in the planning, you will ensure that when you write the essay, that it will be in the essay also. Okay, so what about crops is um, own knowledge. You can talk about it's... Um, Okay, you can talk about, even though we are genetically modifying crops, we're manipulating the genes, we have been using artificial selections, or in agriculture, artificial selection for thousands of years anyway, making better crops. So it's not something that hasn't been done already, it's something that we are we're just adding to. So that would be a nice example of, our, um, of own knowledge. Obviously, there's lots of own knowledge that you can put in, you can, if, if it's relevant, you could say, how you genetically modify the crops, how it's not changing, the, how it's not altering certain things. For example, um, vegetarians are very concerned about how putting a fish gene in tomatoes 
um, is very is not making it not a vegetarian thing anymore. You can discuss and explain that DNA is DNA and therefore it's not affecting it. So there's lots of own knowledge that you can put in here. Okay, and then you continue to do this for the rest of the topic. So you'll talk about cattle or livestock. The first point under here maybe could be, something, obviously reading from the text, would be something about increased, change my pen, increased meat production. Okay, that might be source B or whatever source is. Remember to put the sources in. These are easy, easy marks. Okay, the second one could be increased milk. And that could be source A. It might be source A where you had a whole lot of things about crops. So do you understand I'm not reiterating and maybe going on a little bit too much, but it's not according to sources. You can have source A in all three topics, etc. etc. Okay. And then again, don't forget your own knowledge. I don't want to bore you for too long. Put something in there. Okay, then you've got financial implications. Let's say it is much cheaper to produce. And that would be source D, etc. etc. Okay, again, a whole lot of things and so on. Remember your own knowledge. Okay, and because this is a scientific essay, and because you need to balance it, you need to have a counter-argument. So there are two options with this counter-argument. Either you can make an entire little um, section for itself, or you can put it under each one. So I prefer to put it separately first, and then look at how to integrate it. Because sometimes you will have time to integrate your counter-argument, and sometimes you won't. The point is you need to finish your essay. So let's put it separately. Okay, so here is the counter. Right, so the first thing would be, okay, so I don't want to say it's unnatural and it's um, against God or anything like that. I wouldn't, I would try to stay away from religion, even though for many of you, it's quite important. It's just to try and keep it scientific. It's better not to bring religion into it at all. Okay, so the first thing you could say obviously would come from the sources, would be um, other harmful mutations could arise. Let's say that was source B, okay? Right, then you carry on reading. And another counter-argument would be, um, uh, let's say, other crops may get um, the new genes and that was source D, etc, etc. Okay, so you look at your counters. Now, if you look at your rubric, and I'm sure your teachers have given you the rubric, and if they haven't, you need to ask them for that rubric because it will help you when writing the essays or when planning for essays. Okay, you only need three to four counter arguments. If you start doing more than three to four counter arguments, you're going to end up arguing against your topic and it's going to not, and your decision will not be clear anymore. Okay, so there are your three to four counter arguments and what you need to look at before you even start writing the essay is how can you integrate this into your essay? Because the perfect essay would be where you argue your point, you then create some type of counter where you explain the counter argument and then do almost a mini conclusion where you say why this counter argument is not enough to dissuade you from your decision. Okay, so let's look at these two, even though you will do more. Okay, let's just look at these two and where we're going to include them. So I would say, okay, other harmful mutations could arise. Let's say this makes sense to fit into cattle. Okay? So you know that this counter-argument is going to go into the cattle livestock um, S, um, paragraph. And then the other crops may get new genes. Okay, that will obviously go with that. So just something you can draw a line or you can highlight it, different colours, whatever you need to do to remind yourself when you write in the essay to put the counter-argument into each of these paragraphs. Okay. 
And there is one last thing that you need to do before you start your essay. I know this sounds like it's taking me a really long time, but I'll show you how you can do it while you're writing your essay. Okay, is that if you have to look at the sources. Now the sources, I'm sure some of you have done research in biology. Um, some sources are really valid or very reliable and others really have carry no weight. So um, when you're arguing a point, you want to use valid sources. Okay, so how would you do that? You would look at this and say, hold on, source A is really, really valid. So when I'm arguing source A, I must put in how valid that source is. So I can do a, a circle. Okay, you do a circle around source A and you alert yourself to it why it's valid. Now, how is a source valid? Either it is from a journal article or it's been published in a journal or it's written by, from a university or a doctor wrote it or something that shows that it's valid or from even from a newspaper that is not a rubbish newspaper, something that would like a Mail and Guardian or something where you know there's been research behind it. Something that is not valid would be someone's blog or potentially you magazine. Okay, sorry, might be in trouble for that. Okay, or something like that. It's not, they're not scientifically valid. So just be careful when you're doing that. You must include the validity when you're doing your essay. Okay, so this is your plan. Your plan is worth six marks out of 40, which doesn't seem like much, but it is still a, a large enough percentage that you want it. You want these six marks. And the other reason why this plan is so important is because if you plan properly, you will write a better essay. Okay, so now that we have done the plan, let's go on to how to write the essay. Okay, I'm not going to write say too much about this because once you've planned the essay, it's quite easy. So let's start with obviously the introduction. Okay, so over here, we'll write introduction over here. So again, it's scientific. What you want to do is create context, scientific context. So the best thing for me, I would say, is to define the topic. So in this case, you want to define what are genetically modified organisms. Define whether it is, it, uh, if you're doing something on designer babies, just define what a designer baby is. If you're doing something about, um, should you be allowed to use um, inoculations? Are they bad for you? What is an inoculation? What is the history of it? But not two pages on this, just something to define it, to explain it nicely and create context for the essay. So in this case, you're going to define genetically modified organisms. Okay? So that's just to create context. And then what you'll do is you will um, state your stance. So you can say genetically modified organisms are organisms that have had, that have had their genes manipulated, either genes inserted or removed, in order to create more viable um, organisms um, for, for humans or for people. And then you state your stance. And you can say something along the lines of, even though many people are against consuming genetically modified organisms because of, the in, because of increased crop yield, as well as um, the increased meat production, genetically modified organisms are good. Okay, that's a bit long-winded. You can definitely shorten it. You can say something along the lines of genetically modified organisms are any organism that has, has had their genes manipulated for the betterment of humankind. Um, and because they are for the betterment of humankind, they should be allowed, they, sh they are good for you and should be allowed to be produced. That's a bit shorter, I think it's a bit better. Okay, so define, define the topic and then your stance for your decision. Okay, so that, that's it. Five, six lines, you really don't need to do much more than that. Right, now that you've done the introduction, you need to start writing paragraphs. Each topic needs to be in a paragraph. But sometimes you will have a topic that is so long that you would rather put it into two paragraphs. It's, no, it's nothing worse for an examiner, for me specifically, I'm sure other examiners, than to read an entire page of information without a break. So you really need to make your paragraphs reasonably length okay the length must be reasonable so let's say this because you've written seven points let's say under crops and you want to make it um, into one topic you will then divide it into two paragraphs or even three paragraphs okay so you'll talk about a few things in the first paragraph and then the next now what's important when you're writing scientific writing it needs to be fact intensive i've said that but it needs to be your voice 
So you need to explain it in your way. I always say that there's certain people, so certain of my students that I read their essays, I can actually hear them talking. It's their own voice. They explain it in the way that they understand. Never, never copy from the text. Do not use quotation marks and put, the, put text in. You have to use your own words. You have to make it your own. Okay, so you've written a, a paragraph on a few of the, of the topics, and then you have not included your counter because it hasn't been relevant yet. And then you go on to the, you carry on. And now you're going to introduce your counter. So when you introduce your counter, you will talk about the topic, say, um, for example, it's the crops. Okay, you talk about art, whatever, your less disease and things like that. And then you can say, however, genes, it's possible that the genes from the crops will then move to other crops. Okay, and you explain it. When you're doing a counter argument, don't just state the counter argument. You need to explain it. If you're not explaining the counter, you're not going to get marks because you're not integrating the counter argument. You're just stating the counter argument. So it needs to be two or three sentences. It needs to be explained properly. But the way that you ensure that the examiner, whoever's marking it, is not confused by the end, is to draw a mini conclusion at the end of that counter. So what you'll say is that this, this is the counter and it may be transferred, and then you can count and you know, it might be from your own knowledge that it's possible to prevent gene transfer by removing certain genes from whatever it is, and therefore, this, don't, you know, don't say this argument is not valid because that is much more like an English or history essay. Um, just say, and therefore, it's not concerning, will not be a problem when genetically modifying crops, something like that, just to ensure that you have counted or many concluded why genetically modified organisms are still good and you haven't changed your mind. Okay, and then you'll continue to do this. So then you've got your second, um, or the third or fourth paragraph where you discuss cattle and then the financial implications. Remember always to include own knowledge and it must be the own knowledge from that you've put into, that you've put into your plan. And the reason is because you can put extra or new own knowledge into the essay and the examiner might not notice that it's your own knowledge because you haven't alerted them to the fact that this is own knowledge. So if you, you write an essay and it's all great and you remember something else and it's your own knowledge, quickly, while, once you've written it, add it to your plan so that it's in both. Okay, right. So what you've done now, you've got a four or five paragraphs or six, okay, where you have explained each topic scientifically, not going off topic, not repeating yourself, and in, included the counter argument as often as possible and um, obviously not more than four otherwise it starts to look like you haven't quite made a decision okay um right so you put your counter argument into each remember at some point when you are saying your source a you've spoken about validity of the source so you must include that you can say that source um you can say that um, the source was from a, a journal article and therefore um, has and therefore has validity and aids in the argument or explaining the argument um, or something like that. Okay, and then you have to do a conclusion. Now the conclusion has to be have merit. It doesn't have to be this incredible conclusion. You just need to restate your stance and why. So you need to say something along the lines of um, due to the financial implications, the increase in crop and cattle, um, the genetically modified organisms should be allowed. Again, not the best, uh, not the best, but the idea is that you want to conclude that you can even say, although there are some, and you can include the counter arguments, due to the fact that um, it's cheaper to produce, it increases crop yield, which will lead to um, less starvation in the world, and same thing with cattle, genetically modified organisms are good. Okay, and that is the end. It needs to be about at least two and a half pages. It is very long and it takes a very long time. But at the end, when you're writing paper two and you have two case studies and this essay, you need to try to get this essay into about half an hour, 35 minutes. That includes planning. So you need to really work fast. And I think the plan, once you've done a good plan, you should be able to write your essay in about 20 minutes. So I'm sure you can practice. I'm sure you'll ask your um, teachers for some questions or some essays. And um, you need to practice a lot. You need to get fast with essays. 
Okay, also make sure you ask for your rubric so that you can see what I've said. But you will, as long as you, as long as you do many conclusions, so it means that you're linking one paragraph to the next and you don't repeat yourself and you use scientific language and you keep with the facts and you show your own voice so that the examiner knows that this is not just copying from the sources. You use your own knowledge, you explain it like that. You will do really, really well in the essays. So good luck. I hope you do really well. I hope this has helped you. And yeah, great. Cheers.